How to calculate initial and future value? The table shows the value of an investment compounded annually at the end of each year. Find initial investment. Find future value of the investment after 10 years. So here is the table. These are the years 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in the, and at the end of each year we know the final balance which is 520 at the end of first year, 540.80 at the end of second year, 562.43 at the end of third year, 584.93 at the end of fourth year and 608.33 at the end of five years. Now here we need to find the initial investment that means what was the amount initially deposited or invested which became 520 at the end of first year. Second, what is going to be its future value means what will it be worth after 10 years. So as we know that the amount invested is compounded annually so every year it gets multiplied by a factor is an exponential function. So if we find that factor, then it be easy for us to answer the question. So let's figure out what that growth factor is, which we can find by dividing consecutive values of the investment. Right? So let's find growth factor first. So that is the first step, growth factor. Now, we could divide any two consecutive values and find the growth factor. So let's divide 540.80, the value at the end of second year, by the value at the end of first year, which is 520.00. It gives us, let's use calculator, 540.80 divided by 520. It gives you 1.04. So let's check if we are getting the same value for others. So this time we will do 584.93 divided by its previous value which is 562.43. So this is 584.93 divided by 562.43. It is equal to 1.04. So the same. So the growth factor is 1.04. From growth factor, you can also find annual compound interest rate, which is 4%. Okay? Now, the question here is, find the initial amount. So how are you going to find the initial amount? Now, when we know at the end of the year we have 520, what should be the initial amount? How can we find that? Well, if the growth factor is 1.04, that means initial amount times 1.04 is equals to 520, correct? So if I say that the initial amount is the principal amount P, so let's say P is your principal amount, then P times 1.04 should be equal to 520, correct? So from here, we can find what the value of P is, right? So we can say P is equals to 520 divided by 1.04, right? So let's do that. 520 divided by 1.04. It gives us $500. So this is equals to $500, right? So that means the initial amount is $500. So we can write this answer, which is dollar $500. So by multiplying, we get the next year's value and by dividing we get previous years value well that's the trick now how do you find the future value future value is a value after some years that means we are going to multiply by this factor right now if it is the future value of the investment after 10 years we have to multiply it 1.04 to the power of 10 right the initial amount so we can say well the future value which is f for us after 10 years will be equals to initial amount of 500 times 1.04 to the power of 10. So let's calculate how much do we get. So we have 500 times 1.04 to the power of 10. It is equal to 740.12. 740.12. 
So that is our answer as a future value after 10 years. Now we got this answer. But now here is one thing. In this question, we wanted to, because a part of the question was to find initial investment. And therefore, first we found the initial investment and then the final value. But if we would have to find the final value without using initial investment, we could have done it. Let us say we start from this point, third year. And now we want to find, if we know that at the end of three years, the investment is 562.43. What is the investment after 10 years? I mean, so how can you find it? We can use 562, we can use 562.43, right? This value at the end of three years and say it should be multiplied by how many times? 10 minus 3 is 7. So it should be multiplied by 7 times. Let's do that. So we get 562.43 times 1.04 to the power of 7. And what do we get? We get the same amount, 740.12. Right? So, so we could find by multiplying any one of these by a factor of 1.04. Other alternative could be keep on multiplying by 1.04 and get next year's value, right? So you can get next year's value by multiplying by 1.04, right? So, this, so there are alternate ways of doing the same thing. Remember, the most important thing here is whenever we are dealing with compound interest, then the future value is getting multiplied by a factor same time over and over again. It's an exponential function. So if you treat it as an exponential function, you can find so many alternate ways of solving such questions. I hope that helps. Thank you.